Hey there, folks, it's me, Crazo3077. Don't recognize this screen? Then, you know, it's not about a Game Boy Advance back when it was big. This is Sonic Advance, possibly one of the most popular Sonic games for the Game Boy Advance at its time. It had two sequels, and overall was a great game. One of the features that a lot of people enjoyed was the Tiny Chow Garden, which I'm going to talk about today. Now, keep in mind, I've used this Chow Garden a number of times in a number of different tests and videos. These number of rings down here, I did not naturally acquire them. I have a Game Shark Advance SP, or Game Shark SP, I don't remember which it's called, and that's how I got all these rings. The toys you see here came from this. By hitting left, it opens what is the equivalent to the black market in the Tiny Chow Garden. It lists fruits, eggs, and did list toys down here. Those toys aren't there anymore. The toys were a trumpet, a TV, and a duck. We'll get into more details about those later. Right now, the garden is empty. Just the toys, no chow. As you just noticed, this weed sprouted up. After a while, weeds will sprout up and all you gotta do is click on them, pull them up. Before we bring in the chow, I want to point out a few important features. First off, the landscaping. As you can see, there is grass and there is water. It's simply that. The duck cannot go on the grass, the TV, and the trumpet cannot go in the water. Simple stuff. This hand is how you control everything. You click on stuff, you grab stuff, and you can interact with the chow using it too. Up here are two Game Boy Advance. If you don't know what a Game Boy Advance is, wow, you are either very young or have lived in a cave. Or got introduced to the series of games when the Game Boy Advance SP was big. These two have mini games in them. I will get to the mini games after this. Eat again. Now let's get our chow. Over here, when you have no chow in the garden, they will give you a normal chow for free. If you remember in my normal chow video, I suggest this is a way to get them. To hatch the chow, you can either wait for it to hatch on its own, or you can do as I just did, hit A on it, and basically pet it. Rub the egg three times, and it hatches. Automatically, the chow is given a name over here. You can click on the name, which I'm going to do, and rename it. For the sake of this, we'll rename it after me, just for some fun. And if you hit start, you can exit. Right here it says child, and has that little image there. That indicates its alignment, it's automatically neutral as all chow are at birth, and that it's a child. Right now you'll also notice the chow is staring at the TV. Every time a chow stares at a TV, normally it will lead to either it just sitting there for a while or it mentioning something. For example, this is all staged. It's remarking possibly on watching wrestling. You should recognize the swim, fly, run, power, and stamina bars from the normal chow garden. They start off at level 1 here. Why they start off at level 1, I don't know. If you transfer the chow over, it doesn't make any real difference. My eyes are starting to hurt. Then don't stare at the TV. Another weed. The two that you will not recognize is the mood and the belly. The mood is how happy the chow is. The scream of a wondrous soul. Chow! Chow! Aren't these deep creatures. The mood and the belly are very important to the chow's happiness. The mood is its happiness. The higher the bar is, the better the chow is feeling. For example, if you pet the chow, its mood goes up. Unfortunately, that'll only work so many times every certain number of minutes I haven't kept track. If you feed the chow, its belly will go up. In the marketplace here, there are a number of different fruit. Each fruit boosts the chow's stat and can lower a stat. They're basically like the animals, but in fruit form. 
This last fruit, this last fruit here, the most expensive, I would not recommend. It lowers your child's mood. I don't even remember what it does to the belly. And it boosts all of the stats except for stamina. Clearly something is demonic about that fruit. So let's give it a pink fruit. You'll notice the child's mood went up and the child's belly went up. That means that it's fairly satisfied with how hungry it is, but it could eat more. Once the child is full, it will stop eating. I will actually demonstrate that here. The mood can keep going as high as it needs. It will not stop you. Now the child's swim and run are boosted, which is actually very good for a child in a child garden. Now that the child's belly is full, it will refuse to eat the fruit. Typically, you drop the fruit on the chow using the hand, but sometimes if you just leave a fruit out in the garden, the chow will find it on its own. This also happens in a normal garden from time to time. Now, as you just saw, the TV functions very simply. The chow walks up to it and stares at it. The trumpet, on the other hand, you need to put on the chow like you would a fruit. It will play the trumpet, starting off with making awkward sounds, and the more it plays it, the better it'll sound. The duck. Unfortunately, the duck does nothing. Supposedly, the chow can swim with the duck or ride the duck, but that does not happen in this version of the chow garden. Or the tiny chow garden. If I had a shorter... If I had shorter legs, I could be a mo... You don't have legs! <laughs> Is that a joke? Y you have feet! As I mentioned before, there are eggs in the market. The ones that people typically look out for are the silver and gold eggs, which are the cheapest. Most people can afford those. I would right now buy this egg, but unfortunately that would not turn out... Or actually, wait, no, I can. Because I've got something else set up here. The tiny chow garden can hold one chow and one egg. The chow will continuously never shut up. I'm going to warn you ahead of time. 